Hello! I go by Progress Only, I do stream on Twitch, and I have set up a relegation system that I'm going to be using for NCW 25 when it comes out. Now, I bought the standard edition because I didn't think three days a lead was enough to justify 20 bucks and I don't do Ultimate Team, so we're going to run with that. Um, so what I did, I sorted every team with a region. So I have Southeast, Pacific, Mountain, Midwest, and Northeast. Those regions allow me to split them up geographically enough where I can split them later. And then for the intro year, I put in everyone's F FPI um, preseason from ESPN. I, and then sorted them that way. And then I split the conferences. I have four tier one conferences. So the top, they're all 14 teams apiece. So that's uh, 56 teams. I have three tier two conferences. That's also 14 teams. So that's 42 teams. And then two tier three conferences at 14 apiece. So 28 teams there. And then the remaining teams are independent. The lowest eight teams are independent. Now, for how, to do, how I'm doing relegation is in the top four, conferences, the tier one conferences, which is in the way I have it set up, ACC, Big Ten, Big 12, SEC. They're sorted as geographically located as possible. So uh, ACC has Penn State, West Virginia, Maryland, Rutgers, Virginia Tech, James Madison, Pittsburgh, Ohio State, Michigan, Notre Dame, NC State, North Carolina, Wisconsin, and Kentucky. Uh, of those teams... The bottom two at the end of the season will be relegated to tier two. And that's true on all of them. So we have eight teams that drop down to tier two. My tier two divisions or conferences, which is the MAC, the Mountain West, and the PAC. The top two for each conference, and then the next two overall between the uh, three conferences. So next two teams in terms of uh, power at the end of the season, which is going to go off of record and ranking, depending on how the layout looks like on NCAA, NCAA 25. But um, the next two teams between the, those third and fourth place spots amongst those three will be able to move up as well to fill in the eight total spots. The MAC teams that are in Tier 2, Boston College, Appalachian State, Syracuse, Wake Forest, Virginia, Troy, Georgia Southern, Liberty, Florida Atlantic, Georgia State, South Florida, Jacksonville State, East Carolina, and Coastal Carolina. That's just the East Coast essentially. So the, the, the Mount West is actually in the central and the pack is as far west as I needed to go. And then tier three, there's only two divisions. So you're going to be sending the bottom two for each of the MAC teams down, but you're going to be sending three from the tier three up. So the top three in each of the tier threes will be moving up. So that's um, American Conference and Conference USA. And my examples for those, I have uh, on the American Conference, Toledo, Bowling Green, Old Dominion, UMass, Hawaii, Ohio, Central Michigan, Charlotte, Buffalo, Western Michigan, Ball State, Navy, Yukon, and Eastern Michigan. Those are the east of the Tier 3. The top three of those will go up to Tier 2. The bottom two of those will go down to the Independent. And there's supposed to be two from the Conference USA that are going to Independent. Independent is the bottom eight teams from the uh, FPI Index. The bottom eight teams on ESPN's FPI Index are New Mexico State, Akron, University of Louisiana Monroe, Sam Houston State, Kennesaw State, Florida International, Temple, and Kent State. Now, the independence, it's where it's a little bit goofy because you're sending four teams down. So that has a lot of churn. You're going to have the top four of the last eight independents that are stuck down there moving up a division every year. So in theory, you're going to get your playoff contenders mostly from the tier one schools. You're going to get probably eight to 10 of your playoff teams from these tier one conferences, the ACC, Big Ten, Big 12, and SEC. Uh, you're going to get probably one or two from the tier two teams or tier two conferences, MAC, Mount West, and PAC. And you might, if the scheduling comes out and they do really well, get one from tier three, but you're very really going to get a tier three at, based off of how I'm guessing this is going to go. And you're going to almost never get a, a tier four <laughs> to be good enough to make it into the playoffs. You can take a tier four team and force their way up. And at the end of the season, you have to do comments realignment and shift them all again based off of either ranking or overall record based off of how the game does it in game. I've seen a couple shots from uh, the people who do this, you know, have done NCAA 14 for a long time. So that's what we're going to be doing. And it's going to be loads of fun. I'll be overlaying some of the teams and conferences as we go here. So here, I'll do that now. You have the ACC, which again, Penn State, West Virginia, Maryland, Rutgers, Virginia Tech, James Madison, Pittsburgh, Ohio State, Michigan, Notre Dame, NC State, North Carolina, Wisconsin, and Kentucky. There's still some good rivalries in there. You lose some 
Oh, obviously by doing this, but there are still some good rivalries. And then you have the game, uh, you have Battle of Pennsylvania, you have Virginia Tech with West Virginia, which is still going to be a good one. James Madison's in there, uh, Notre Dame's in there, so Notre Dame and Michigan could be a thing that year. Like there's some good in there. Uh, the Big Ten, which is the central region, is Texas, Oklahoma, Missouri, Kansas, Kansas State, Louisville, Southern Methodist, Oklahoma State, Iowa, Baylor, Nebraska, Arkansas, Iowa State, and Duke. But Duke kind of got left out of the ACC conversation with how everyone, everything landed. But you have Texas, Oklahoma, so you got Red River. You have Kansas, Kansas State. Uh, you have Iowa, Iowa State, which I mean, you know, it's not technically as big of a rivalry right now, but it's still a rivalry game. And you have Baylor, Texas, SMU, all from Texas fighting each other out there. Uh, big 12 out west, I have Oregon, USC, Arizona, Washington, Oregon State, UCLA, Cal, Boise State, Colorado, Utah, Texas Tech, UTSA, Texas A&M, and TCU. That's a pretty good mix of the old pack and the Texas section of the top tier uh, schools. So you have a good chunk of the old uh, pack out there, but you also retain some uh, the Texas influence in that in that uh, conference. Kind of the SEC is Florida State, Florida, Miami, uh, Central Florida, Georgia, Georgia Tech, Clemson, South Carolina. Alabama, Auburn, Ole Miss, Mississippi State, LSU, and Tennessee. That is very SEC heavy, so it fits at the SEC conference. Florida, Florida State's in there. Miami of Florida is in there too, as well. Georgia, Georgia Tech is not a big one right now, but if the way they're scheduled, I mean, it's, it's possible that it becomes a big rivalry again. Clemson is, is in there, so you have the ACC. You, you have um, Iron Bowl, Alabama, Auburn, <clears throat> Mississippi, Mississippi State, LSU's in there. Like, there's still some really great rivalries in there. Get down to Tier 2, I have Boston College, Appalachian State, Syracuse, Wake Forest, Virginia, Troy, Southern, Georgia Southern, Liberty, Florida Atlantic, Georgia State, South Florida, Jacksonville State, East Carolina, and Coastal Carolina. That's, a, that, that's considered the MAC in how this is set up. That's uh, a very curious tier uh, division because there's so many goofball matchups in there. Like... Liberty being in there, Jacksonville State being in there, Coastal Carolina being in there. Those are all newer teams. Uh, Boston College has never been that great. Appalachian State still considered a newer team, even though they've been pretty good. Uh, Wake Forest, Virginia have been in for a long time, and they're not they're not considered great. Florida Atlantic's not a great school. Like, it's like these are schools that are just mid, and there's going to be some goofy matchups there. Uh, Mountain West, which is more actually Midwest, you have Miami, Ohio, Indiana, Northwestern, Purdue, Minnesota, Illinois, Cincinnati, Michigan State, Marshall, Vanderbilt, Southern Alabama, or excuse me, South Alabama, uh, University of Louisiana, Arkansas State, and Tulane. So the second tier of Big Ten is like all right here. Michigan State, Purdue, Minnesota, Illinois, Indiana, Northwestern. Uh, you got a little bit of Mac in here. You got Miami, Ohio, and you have Vanderbilt, the laughing stock of the SEC, unfortunately. And you have Tulane, which is a very interesting add in this tier, I think. I think I think that that's going to be the wild card one, even though they're not the highest ranked one in this group. Um, I, I, th- I think that'll add some nice flavor in there. And then uh, out west for the pack for tier two is Stanford, Arizona State, Washington State, Memphis, BYU, Fresno State, Houston, San Diego State, San Jose State, Texas State, UNLV, Air Force, Rice, and Wyoming. So this is pretty much the rest of the old pack. Stanford, Washington State, Arizona State, whatever. Uh, you also have BYU uh, out there with Houston, uh, San Diego and San Jose State. That could be a rivalry. Uh, UNLV is there, but not Nevada. Air Force is, is going to be there uh, fighting, and you have Wyoming. So Air Force and Wyoming could be a, considered a rivalry in, in this in this decision. Going down to Tier 3 uh, in the American Conference, we have Toledo, Bowling Green, Old Dominion, UMass, Army, Ohio, Central Michigan, Charlotte, Buffalo, Western Michigan, Ball State, Navy, Yukon, and Eastern Michigan. Army Navy, big one right there. Uh, you have the three directional Michigan schools right now, and those that's a small MAC rivalry. Uh, you have Toledo and Bowling Green also there from the MAC. UMass, the school that gets dumpstered every year, uh, finally gets a conference, and it's. It, I mean, the, the, all these teams are not not amazing nationally, so you know that could be interesting to shove them in there. Old Dominion, Ball State, UConn, another team that's not very good. So you're gonna see some goofy teams, and you can have some weird um, upsets to. Uh, for promotion out of this group. And then CUSA, which is in the west of the Tier 3, you have UAB, Tulsa, Utah State, Southern Miss, North Texas, Colorado State, Middle Tennessee, Western Kentucky, Hawaii, UTEP, Northern Illinois, New Mexico, Louisiana Tech, and Nevada. 
I can't say much about those teams. It's going to be pretty much the same thing as the Amer- as the American in the East. There's going to be a bunch of goofy matchups and some surprises that show up. Like you could do like a Louisiana Tech and Southern Miss. There we go. You Louisiana Southern Miss or Tulsa and Utah State could be a goofy rivalry. Like there's no one that's geographically linked to each other other than UTEP and North Texas, and that's not really a close thing either. UTEP's um, close to New Mexico. I guess you could do that, but like that's about it for that for for that group. Then the Independents. Yeah, who and I already told you who, who's not here. New Mexico State, Akron, University of Louisiana Monroe, Sam Houston, Kennesaw State, Florida International, Temple, and Kent State. And they're just gonna be filling filling wherever they can. So you'll probably see uh, schedules for these when they generate in the new conferences try to be geographically centered. But I guess it depends on the logic of the game. Again, half of those teams aren't gonna be there next year. They're gonna be put up into tier three. So if you get New Mexico and New Mexico State in the same uh, division, that'd be great. That, 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 I mean, that way you have an actual reverie in, in there. Uh, Kennesaw State's brand new. Sam Houston had a not good year last year. Temple's never really been that good. Kent State is considered the worst team in the game. At least Akron and Kent State can have a rivalry game. So they're just going to be filling filling gaps and probably playing a lot of FCS teams to, to fill the schedule. Especially with Notre Dame packed uh, and UConn and UMass, which usually fought against those those schools aren't that great being in a conference. But yeah. That's the set. I, that's the setup I have. That's what I'm going to be playing. I'm going to start. I, I play in the evenings, so I'm going to be doing that and I'm going to be setting up. And I'm probably going to play one of those, one of those uh, tier four teams. I don't know which one. It's going to be one of those tier four teams, and we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, I may just go Kent State just because they're considered the worst team in the game. Play it on the whatever hardest difficulty I can, where I don't win all the time, and have some fun with it. Learn the recruiting, and go from there. So, thank you, everyone. Uh, Twitch.tv slash progress only. I stream in the evenings about 9.30 uh, U.S. East. We'll have some fun. And maybe eventually we'll get to win a national championship as, I don't know, Kent State or Akron. Anyway, thank you. Uh, if you want to use it, that's great. I have links down below and, you know, all that promotion stuff. Um, I am a streamer, but I'm not a big streamer. I know that. But if you want to use this, please, as long as you just say, hey, this guy created it. That's all I, that's all I care about. Have a good day, everybody.